Daniel 4.33a, the second part, talking about the grammatical and syntactical structure leading up to the first zakef katon. So the first verbal clause is subject-verb, and the second is also subject-verb, but we need to take a closer look. And the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and my splendor return to me. Now it looks like there are several items that are candidates there for being part of the subject because this is third person masculine singular, remember? But we have several items. How can that be? Shouldn't it be a plural, third person masculine plural? Well, by spelling, it's not. So what evidence could we draw together to try to figure out what is the singular subject? Well, we have gender available, but glory and majesty and splendor are all masculine, so that's not going to help. Let's look to the accents. So starting off right here, we have the garish accent, which is a fourth order accent. And in case you're wondering about the one that comes before it, this is an azla, and it's the conjunctive accent that comes before a garish. So continuing on, my majesty and my splendor then leads up to a pashta, which is a third level accent. And of course, the zakev katan is a second level. So what these accents are trying to show us is that there is, of course, a break right here separating these items, these subjects, so to speak, from the verb. But also, where is the break going to be placed? The break is placed right here. So at the front, there's a subject and the glory of my kingdom and then my majesty and my splendor are a second part that comes next. Plus, if we look at Biblical Aramaic for Biblical Interpreters, page 35, we see situations that look like compound subjects. Often the subject-verb agreement will actually be with the first item in the list rather than with all the items resulting in a plural. So those are just a few notes to figure out why in the world we have a singular verb.